Welcome to a very festive edition of Lex Education, the comedy science Christmas podcast where comedian Christmas me, Laura Lex, tries to learn Christmas science from her Christmassy brother, Ron. Oh, I'm Ron. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Ron! Merry Christmas, Laura. I was desperately trying to work out whether Rondolf the Red-Nosed Reindeer <laughs> or Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was better, and then I abandoned both and went for... I like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer because it also sounds like, you're going, oh, it's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Ah, uh, yes. Mm. Uh, how how Christmas are you, Christmas Ron? I uh, debated putting up Christmas lights today, and... But Ron, it's Christmas week. I've been using candles. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, I know we're recording this at the beginning of December, but we're releasing it on the 19th, so can you pretend it's Christmas week? Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, I fucking if you're broke debating the Grinch's only- <laughs> jaw yesterday. I'm having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ron. Uh, I mean, Ron, when this gets released, you'll be in sunny Mexico. Uh, no, not quite. Oh, my God. Just let me have something here, Ron. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Have you got your decks up? No, it's only the 1st of December. Are you going to Mexico? No, technically, actually, I won't have yet. <laughs> Say hello in a Christmassy way. Ho, ho, I'm Ron. I'm trying so hard. To do what? To be Christmassy. You weren't very Halloweeny on the Halloween episode. Fuck your ass. I was so Halloweeny. I listened to all that stuff. Yeah, and I've done hours upon hours of research for this. Laura can attest, I was WhatsApping her past midnight last night researching this shit. I can't believe we're doing a festive end of term episode and you've already made us have a row. I have, no, this has not come from me this time. This, this has is come full from you. on from no, you. Bollocks. All I've done is be jolly and ask you about Christmas. Why are you screaming? Because you were like telling, saying that I was like shooting you down for stuff. I wasn't. I was just correcting you. Said you said punch the Grinch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put him in hospital, <laughs> Saving Christmas. Well, no, but... Oh, were you thinking the Grinch at the beginning of the film? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like as in the classic word, the Grinch. Yeah, sorry, you know I when thought, someone says I that th- they're a bit of a Grinch about stuff, they don't mean the redeemed Grinch at the end of it, right? I, always, I, I was picturing the end Grinch, and I thought, you know, he's learned to love Christmas, and then you punched him. <laughs> See now that doesn't make any sense. No. You no, that that's never how anyone means anything. <laughs> the one at the end. Well they should, because that's they how he is for most one. of time. Yeah, but like if you were to reference any bad guy in most things, and then, like if you're like, oh, he's the Voldemort of this or that. Then yeah, but Voldemort be doesn't get redeemed. Voldemort no, doesn't dies. change his mind. Yeah, no, he dies. Yeah, but the Grinch changes his mind, so the Grinch now, canonically, loves Christmas. Yeah, but like, yeah, but you don't just use the end state of someone to then describe them. Like, I do. Well, that's weird. No, it isn't. Yeah. Because that's how you left the story with them. Yeah, but you can't say that, like, our grandma is the Sauron of Christmas because they're both dead. Like, <laughs> that's, that's not how it works. <laughs> Well, I don't think deadness is a personality trait, though, is it? Like, no. <laughs> anyway, Merry Christmas, <laughs> listener. 
<laughs> Ron and I aren't spending Christmas together this year, so here we are. Because I'm going to be in Mexico from the 22nd <sighs> until the 7th. Laura, what are we doing for our Christmas episode? We're having a fucking row. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Don't um, make me do to you what I did to the Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> that poor Grinch. He's only just got over, like, the probably physical trauma of his heart growing three sizes. <laughs> and now he's punched in the neck. Um... Hey, well, so as it's the end of term, we are going to be watching a Christmas movie. But because Ron loves science so much, Ron can't just watch a Christmas movie quietly. Ron has taken it upon himself to study the science of the Christmas movie that we are watching. Ron, why did you so badly want to do this? (sighs) That's not how it went down. It's not how it went down. Laura wanted an excuse to watch a Christmas movie in late October. Um, I had an excuse, and that was that it was late October and it's a free country. So Laura watched Home Alone. I did. And has set me the challenge of scientifically analysing the defences that Kevin sets up. Yeah, so I've seen a couple of videos online where medical doctors assess the damage that would have been done to the burglars if they'd been through Kevin's actual booby trap. And I thought, oh, that paint can swing in. I bet that, that's some physics. Ah, oh, what's that door handle made of then that it got real hot? I thought there must be a lot of science in this. So Ron is going to help me understand the science of the McAllister defences. Yeah, okay, and we're going to start with the one that almost had me leaping out of the window last night. Yeah, let's start with Ron's worstest one. Do, 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 do. Christmas jingle, 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 jingle. Let's intersperse this whole episode with just Christmas facts. Laura, what's your favourite Christmas song? Um, Favourite Christmas song? Uh, Oh... Not the punchy segment I thought it would be. <laughs> I love so many Christmas songs. Is um, it Mittens? No, it's not Mittens. Carly Rae J- Is it Carly Rae Jepsen? It is Carly, it is Carly, Rae, Carly Jepsen, Rae Jepsen, yeah. isn't it? Give me your strongest pair, your warmest pair of mittens, please. Very bad song. If you're interested, um, do look it up. Um, what do I love of Christmas songs? I tell you what I love. It's actually is um, who's it by? Like it's called by like Porky and Meat or something. Porky um, and Meat. <laughs> What's it called? Um, and it in you. That one. <laughs> Do you know that one? It sounded like S Club Seven or something. <laughs> yeah, it's something dun, like that. Dun, ba, dun, ba, dun, dun, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. No, 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 no. Um. Oh, hang on. I need to find it. What's yours while I look? Jesus Christ. I thought you were just going to be like, don't you stop the cavalry? <laughs> and then I'd be like, and then I'd move on. I um, do like that one. Yeah, mine is Christmas Wrapping by The Waitresses. Which oh, is that is a good one. Brilliant. Um, and then shout out to Don't You Stop the Cavalry by, was it Jonah Lewis? Jonah Louis, yeah. Mm. I met him once. What's he like? Um, he didn't really understand the rules of Pointless, if I'm totally honest. <laughs> but he seemed like a really nice man. He took Pointless very seriously, um, but didn't really seem to understand it. But a very nice guy. Um, what the fuck is this Christmas song called? Jesus. <laughs> Um, this is, you're just singing S Club 7. Christmas comes around. Just like a shooting star by Danny and Lizzie. That's what it is. Porky and meat. <laughs> I'm listening to it now. It's 
So Scott Laura, clapping in the background. I pour myself a water. Look at this magic there. Look at this should I be here. Cause the sights and sun, the sun in bright stars tonight. How are you so out of breath? You're sat down. What? what? I said, how are you so out of breath? You're sat down. I was singing along, but I don't know the words. I was just like panting along. <laughs> it's disturbing. I'm quite full. I just ate a load of roasted veg and tofu and pasta. So you know when your tummy's like sitting on your lungs? Oh, I'm well into tofu at the moment. Yeah? Can you get cauldron toast? tofu where you are what's cauldron tofu it's really firm tofu and they do a teriyaki one and a smoked one and it's like very flavoursome um no i just get normal firm tofu <laughs> christmas there is a curry flavoured one that they do but it's like four times the price so i don't get it just just roll your own in some curry powder yeah exactly yeah yeah, anyway, Ron, stop trying to put off watching this Christmas movie. I thought that would be a brief segment. It's almost time for the next one. Um, <laughs> right. Ah. Laura, the first one of Kevin's defences that you asked me to investigate yes. is Kevin pours a bucket of water outside over some stone steps leading up to his house. Yeah. Would it freeze within an hour? Yeah. Yeah. Because you assume it's less than an hour because it's like late afternoon when he pours it by the looks of things and then the burglars arrive just as darkness is falling. So you really sounded like that wasn't the end of the sentence? Oh, no, I'm just setting up the science equation. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, I, I spent a long time trying to work out if this would freeze. What would be colder, the ground or the air? So, it's less about what's colder, it's more about something that is called the heat transfer capacity. Mmm, jingle, heat energy transfer capacity, jingle all the way. <laughs> right. So, yeah, um, which is much higher between stone and water than it is between water and air. air what is, is? What is? The, the heat, heat? Tra- heat transfer capacity. So how quickly something can change heat How quickly heat can transfer between another. it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Because air, famously, bad conductor of heat. That's why, you know, when you have a puffy jacket, it's mainly air in there. Oh, and feathers. You didn't know this? No. Air's a terrible conductor of heat. That's why things like polystyrene are good. That's why, like, foam is used for insulation, because it's little pockets of air. Well, why don't you just use an empty box? Because it works better if the air can't move around. Because uh... if air can move around, then you get convection currents, and then that will transfer heat. Uh, but if the air is stuck in these little bubbles, then it transfers very slowly. Okay, all right. That's, that's, I've learned something already. Barely two minutes into the episode and I'm already learning. So, Laura, what do you think we need to know to work this out? We need to know the temperature of the air. Yep. The temperature of the stone on the floor, the uh, stairs. Just, uh, I, didn't, I didn't work it out for both. I just did it in the air. What do you mean? As in, I only did it with the air versus the water. I couldn't do it with both the stone and the air touching the water. Okay. I don't know what that means. Just imagine it's just freezing because of the air, not just because Just floating of... in the air. It's just freezing because of the air, not because of the stone. Okay. Yeah, so air temperature. And the temperature of the stone. And... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? I don't... <laughs> Just like, ignore ignore the stone is all I'm saying. I can't. That's the bit. What? It's freezing on the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> but to work out if it would freeze outside. Right. I've just done it about the air taking their temperature out of the water, not the stone. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> I don't even understand why that's confusing. <laughs> that's not confusing. Yeah, all right. That's what fine. else do we need to know? Well, I don't know now because I don't know what bits you're ignoring. <laughs> well, I'll tell you if you say one of them. What else okay. do we need to know? Uh, the temperature of the water. Yep. And basically one last thing. Uh, now, I'm, I've taken a second because I wanted to say... The temperature of the bucket that the water came out of, but I've changed my mind on that as an answer. Um, (laughs) Maybe the volume of water? Exactly. Well done. And actually... Why are you holding a screwdriver? That's menacing. um, (laughs) It's on my desk, so I'm going to gesture with it. Have you been Um, pretending to do DIY or has Dad been round? No, I do DIY. Give over. Yeah, I fix things. What do you fix? Things that break. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a little handyman. No. I own a screwdriver. It's on the desk having just been used to screw in a screw. Why did you... What are you screwing screws into? The handle on my window gets a bit loose. <laughs> so I DIY'd it back in. Yeah, you really are, Bill, Bob the this Builder. Was Old five, handy man. Five, maybe six days ago. Screwdriver's still out because I'm just that much of a handy man. Just never know when you're going to need to grab it and use it. So, um, yes, all of these things. And then also we need to know the shape that the water is in. What? Yeah. The Shape of Water. That was a film, wasn't it? That was a film with Sandy B, I think. Didn't no. she try to fuck a mermaid? No. No, it wasn't Sandy B. It was that woman from Paddington, wasn't it? Hugh Bonneville. Not the woman from Paddington. No, <laughs> that's a man from Paddington. No, who was in it? That The woman from The Theory of Everything, she was in it, wasn't Eddie she? Eddie Redmayne. No, that's another man. Jessica Chastain. I don't know what that is, who that is. Um, no, the little... Bryce Dallas woman. Howard. N- what? Was, were they in Theory of Everything? <laughs> I don't know. No, who's the little tiny Beth Rigby woman? from Sky News. What are you saying? <laughs> What's happening? No, Shape of Water. I it haven't was... seen it. Neither I have I. Sandy I. B was in it. <laughs> Laura, Christmas <laughs> segment break. <laughs> What's your favourite Christmas movie? Um, Be Swift this time. <laughs> um, it's... um. Uh, why are you were sleeping? That's not Sally not Hawkins. <laughs> what do you mean it's not a Christmas film? Yes, it is. How is it? He literally gets pushed onto the track on Christmas Day. It happens at Christmas. Is it a Christmas film? Well, <laughs> no, I'm... let's not do this again. <laughs> What's Mine yours, Ron? Iron Man 3. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it's not. It's probably Elf. Um, Elf is good. Have you watched Spirited yet? No, what's that? It's the new Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds Christmas musical. <gasps> I haven't. Um, although, shout out Meg, our um, younger sister. Um, her and me used to watch Paranormal Activity every Christmas. That was a fun tradition. Have you not done much? I thought you said you'd done loads of research for this. You are padding this episode like nothing's... Like a padded jacket that's warm because of the air. <laughs> There is a lot to get through, actually. Um, right. <laughs> so, I had to do some... Should I be making notes? Is there going to be a quiz? Nice Christmas, fuck yeah. it. Woohoo! Um, Correct answer. That's one point to you, Ron. I got my first point. Yeah. I told you that microphone setup was precarious. <laughs> yes, and it has been for weeks. <laughs> why don't you become professional? This is why we need to start a Patreon, so we've got some money to turn you into a professional. Yeah, anyway, um, right, so I had to do some guesstimations, okay? So I reckoned that um, Kev's stairs outside... Kev now, is it? A metre and a half by about 20 centimetres, right? 20 centimetres? Deep, No, yeah. at least 30. Please don't fight me on this, because it's like the, the whole... average foot and a step has to be deep enough for a foot to go on the whole thing. 
please don't fight me on this because they have to do all of the summers again. <laughs> Just say that's fine. All right, but then you owe me some for some lessons after Christmas. No, nope, because it's Christmas. <laughs> and then I guesstimated that water on a step might be two millimeter, two millimeters deep. Okay. That equals 600 mil of water on each step. That seemed like more than I was expecting. (laughs) (laughs) Of course, it wouldn't disperse equally, would it? Yeah, it'd be about equal. Water is famously flat. No, but the step wouldn't be. Why not? Ah, just nothing ever is, is it? You cannot nitpick like this right I'm now. not nitpicking. I was helping you out. You said it was more than you thought, and I was saying, oh, here you go. Have it be less if you like, then. Anyway, Laura, what... You're so inflexible. Shut up. What do we need, what formula do we need to work out how much energy it would take for this amount of water to cool down? Delta. MC Delta Theta. Yes. So M is 600 mil, right? Yeah. C is 4.18. Now, what is Delta Theta? I hear you ask. (laughs) So I googled average cold water temp coming out of a tap. 20 degrees. <clears throat> no, that feels too warm. Why? Because that's room temperature. Yeah. And I. Where do you think the water was before it came out the tap? It was in, in the a room. Pipe outside. No. Yeah. That's what it said online. Twenty degrees, is it? Yeah, water will Probably feel colder high. because it's got a higher heat transfer capacity than air. Oh, you see, this is where temperature's a big lie, isn't it? No. Yeah, because you <laughs> say, <laughs> like... <laughs> it's like when they say, oh, it's 20 degrees today, but with wind chill, it feels more like 16. Well, then it's 16 degrees, isn't it, you knobhead? Cause no, it's not. It is, though. No, it's yeah, not. because if that's what no, you feel... No, it's not. That's what it is. No, because the temperature of something has got nothing to do with how hot or cold it feels. It, it, got... That's all temperature is. No, it's not. Yeah, temperature... it is. Have you learned nothing? <laughs> temperature with... is about the internal energy of it. No, not really. That's not useful. Whereas how you feel is like. Well, no, because then the temperature would change depending on what you were wearing and what you were doing beforehand. (laughs) Oh, I'm wrapped up in a coat, so it's 20 degrees for me. No. (laughs) This is dense, Laura. Oh, my skin is 20 degrees, you know? No, you're wrong, and I'm sorry, but no. So, there's two parts of this sum that we need to do. Obviously, you and I both know that we need to work out how much energy it would take to get this water from 20 degrees to zero degrees. And then, what else do we need to know, Laura? Heat constant. Don't just say things. What was the guy where you have a ceiling of your temperature before you change into a new one? Yeah, so that's the specific latent heat that's of fusion. God, I guess. Yeah, the posh guy, the MP for Milton Keynes. Specific latent hu- hunt buzzard. Heat, heat of fusion, yeah. Yeah. So we can work this out, right? So the energy to get to zero is going to be 600 times 20. That's how many degrees it's fallen times 4.186. That's the specific heat constant of water. This gives us 50,232 joules we need to take out of this water to get it down to zero. Okay? Yeah, okay. The specific latent heat of fusion is just 600 times 334. This gives us 200,400 joules, okay, that we need to take out of it for it to freeze. Yes, Ron. So that's 250,632 joules to freeze all of the water, okay? That's how much energy we need to be sucked out of this water, right? Yep. Now, <laughs> we need to work out how quickly that's going to happen. For this... We're going to use 
I think it was Newton Newton's law of cooling. Um, I googled this. The average low temperature in Chicago in December is minus four degrees centigrade. That's warmer than. Well, then I. Oh, average though. Yeah. Average okay. coldest temperature. What does that mean? Is it's the average coldest temperature in December. <laughs> I can't okay. say it. I can't so say it simpler that than that. Is, they've taken all the coldest days and then that's the average of them. Yeah, it's the average coldest temperature. <laughs> so do they take do they take one day a year and then take the average? No, they take December. One, yeah, and then the, the coldest, coldest day temperature December. in it. Yeah. <laughs> the average okay. coldest temperature. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, I love it. And then, and then that's only minus four. I thought that would have been colder, to be honest. Well, 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 it's not. Uh, excuse me, a scientific question, Your Honour. What kind of average did they use? The median, the mode, or the other one? I don't know. Mean. Mean. Probably the mean. Yeah, that's what I would have used. Cool. So, no, then it wouldn't be a round number, probably, would it? I don't know. It's probably rounded. Rounded. Even though four is the spikiest number. <laughs> You're very derailing when you try and join in on the math stuff. Hmm, I wonder which show, which average they would have chosen, actually. I was trying to show you I Learned scholar. <laughs> uh, right, so... The, um, the 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 formula that we need to use now, which I think is Newton's law of cooling, which I can't um, I didn't write this down when I was doing my notes, is Q equals H A brackets T brackets little T close brackets minus T environment close brackets. This is the least Christmassy I've ever felt in my life. So T little T that's the temperature of the thing we're cooling down. That's the water. That's okay. twenty degrees. T nth. That is the temperature of the environment. That's minus four. So that's 24. Okay? Yeah. 20 minus minus four is 24. 20 minus minus four is a positive. You take the two minuses and you put them together. Makes a positive. Yep, so it equals 24. 24. Yeah. Okay. Okay. H is the heat transfer capacity. Now, I had to do quite a lot of Googling for this because, it, they're, they're, you know, they're, 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 there's no just book where it has uh, the heat transfer capacity of air on a step in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> there will be after this, though. So... Um, the HTC for air is anywhere between 10 and 100. So I decided to generously go for the top end because, you know, it's windy, It's uh, because it's December. Also, we, we're ignoring the step, which would have increased the heat transfer capacity. So I've gone yeah, for the top the end of what it would be. would have been colder than the air, wouldn't it? I, no, maybe not, but it would have had a higher heat transfer capacity, so it would have felt colder. It would have sucked energy out of the water more. So if you'd sat on it, you'd have gone, oh, this step's colder than the air. Ergo, Not the if you were a learned doctor like me, you'd have said, oh, this step's <laughs> sucking the heat out of my butt more <laughs> than the air is right now. And everyone would have walked away from you and said, let's not be friends with this small, sciencey child. Yeah. So we Sorry, went for 100. That was a bit similar to your actual childhood, and I apologise for that. <laughs> That's okay. So we went for 100 on this, okay? Then A, capital A, is the area of the thing that we're trying to work out. Yeah, the step. No, of the water, the water. on top of the step. So, so 600 mils? No, that's the volume. We have to work out the area. Yeah. The surface area. Yeah. You understand? Yep. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So I had to do 2 times 1.5 times 0.2 plus 2 times 1.5 times 0.002 plus 2 ti- uh, times 0.02. Uh, 0.02 times 0.002. Crikey. This all came to 0.6068 metres squared. It's the surface area of the water on the step. Right. Now. <laughs> so then you times H by A by T, T, T minus T N. 100 times 0.2. <laughs> Six naught six eight times twenty four, and you get one thousand four hundred and fifty six point three two. 
And that's how cold it was? No. Oh. That is how much energy is getting sucked out of the water per second. Right. So then we Up have to take the sky. Then we have to take the figure that we had before, the two five zero six three two, and we have to divide that. We have to divide that by um, two. And the makers of this film had to do all this before they even made the film, just in case it wasn't accurate. It's crazy. Fourteen. For some reason, I don't have the perfect figure for this, but let me just work it out again. Um, Five six point three two. We'll divide that by that, and we get one hundred and seventy two point naught nine nine. So we'll round that up to one hundred and seventy two point one. That's in seconds, Laura. (laughs) In seconds, yeah, yeah, every second. So, by these calculations, by my calculations, the water would freeze in right? just under three end. minutes. Whoa! However, obviously, this is bollocks because, <laughs> as I realized after I did all of this, <laughs> as the temperature goes down, the temperature difference goes down. So, um, yeah. Once the temp, once the water is nineteen degrees instead of twenty, the temperature difference is then twenty three instead of twenty four. So then, less energy is getting sucked out of it at all times. Right. Do you understand? Yes, Ron. Yes, Ron. Yes, I do, Ron. Yes, so Ron. more energy is going to flow out of something that's like. Yeah, I yes, said it. I fucking understood it. Yeah, but you said it really vacantly. Ron, of everything you've said in the last seven minutes, that was the bit I understood the most. The slide is less steep. Yeah, the slide is less steep. So um, all of that was completely pointless. I've got no idea. (laughs) All right. Science. <laughs> okay, well, let's say then, if it was three minutes for the first degree to freeze and we've got 20 degrees of it, so let's say it was three minutes for the first one, four for the next one, five for the next one, then how long would it be, Ron? I don't know. We'll work that out. No, that'd take ages. No, it wouldn't. Just 20. Um, wait. Four, (laughs) you want to do three plus four plus five plus six plus seven all the way up to 24, wouldn't you? And then you'd have the answer. Well, no, I'd have to work out how much it would, how long it would take for it to drop one degree. And then I'd have to change the... um... That's what I'm saying, though. Let's call that three minutes because you said our three minutes. There you go. I don't understand the... Qu- what, no, well, it was a good segment. Well done, everyone. <laughs> Ron, what's your favourite type of outdoor Christmas light? Ooh, I like the ones that are white but a little bit gold. Yeah, I know what you mean, a warm white. Yeah, a yeah. warm white. Um, I think if you got if you got those like almost UV blues up there, you're a joker, I think... Ooh. I think you're the you're the kind of person that um, would go under the table to pick up a joke from a cracker. Um, Who wouldn't do that? Well, that's where you've got blue lights on your. I haven't got any blue lights. Get fucked. <laughs> do you actually even have any Christmas lights around your way, or is it all a bit posh? Um, last year there was someone that dangled a Santa off a balcony and then <laughs> took it back in March. <laughs> oh wow. Well, everyone's in flats, so it's a bit difficult to decorate outside a flat, isn't it? No, you can still do round your windows. People don't. Yeah, it's a bit posh. Yeah. People go all out where I live. All those projectors, inflatable snowman, it's great. Yeah, it's very low class. (laughs) Yeah, I love it. (laughs) Um, What's your favourite type of Christmas light, Laura? Uh, Too much. I love it when somebody buys six new decorations a year and has no filtering system and their house looks like a garden centre. I just remember being a child and just begging Dad to put up Christmas lights oh, every yeah. year. We were never And then allowed. always saying no. And, I... and then we all moved out and they started putting them up. Yeah, but I get it. I get it. 
Well, Do you? Like, I love having a little jingly it. house. No, I don't even put them up inside, really. Ron, what's of, wrong with you? It's a lot of effort, isn't I'm it? I'm going to punch you in the neck, it seems. <laughs> Where do you think a jaw is? <laughs> Did you not say in the neck? No, it's a, your a jaw's break. basically... Can, you can put your jaw in your neck. No, <laughs> you've just opened your mouth. <laughs> yeah, and where's my jaw now? All right, moving on. Okay. <laughs> when he's wrong, he hasn't got an argument. So I did do a bit because I failed then. You didn't fail, Ron. You can't fail as long as you tried your best. You can. I did. Um, I was doing this so late last night. Well, you should have maybe started doing it before the night before, like I do with all my No, homework. it was the night before Lex education and all through the house. Ron, Ron was scratching was... his head. <laughs> trying to figure out whether a bit of water would freeze in Chicago in December. (laughs) Also, this film was made like 30 years ago, so it's probably colder in Chicago then. Maybe. Um, Right. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The next thing that I... um, I, I wanted to talk about why ice is so slippery. Do you know this? Um... No, I don't know. So it's basically because um, what happens is when you step on it, the pressure from your shoe or whatever on the ice basically melts a very thin layer of water on the top of it. Mm -hmm. So you're never actually touching ice. What you're touching is a thin layer of water, which then just acts as a lubricant. It makes it very, very slippy. Whoa. Okay. Um, Hey, Ron, I've got a science fact for you. Go on. Did you know that water is the only liquid that freezes from the top down rather than the bottom up? And that is the only reason why life on Earth is possible. I did know that. Yeah, it's a very good fact. Yay. Okay. Do you know why that is? Um, No. Well, it's just because um, it's because the structure ice, um, like the the crystal structure that it forms, is just less dense than water, so it floats. Oh, so even if the ice forms at the bottom, it floats to the top. Yeah. Oh. Next one, Laura. Jingle bell, jingle sting, jingle in the podcast. Doorknobs. That's the next one that you asked me to look into. Yep. The doorknob thing. Could Isn't that it dickheady happen? that they have their initials on their doorknob? Yeah, they can fuck off. But also, they're a bit too into the whole family thing, you know? Oh, look, well, we're going to have a hundred children. Oh, no, they only have two. No, there's loads of kids in that film. Yeah, they're cousins. Are they? Have you not really watched it? I have only seen it, like, twice. Yeah, most once of them Once when cousins. I was a child and once last year. I think there's like two or three because he, he's his Buzz is his brother, but Fuller is his cousin. I think. Who's Fuller? The one that pisses the bed. <laughs> <laughs> his actual brother is he, he? That's Kieran Culkin. I love Kieran Culkin. He's in one of my favourite movies. Yeah, he's in Home Alone. If he's you in Scott such Pilgrim a, versus the World. If you weren't such an beginning of the film Grinch, then <laughs> you would know this. <laughs> I've only se- I have seen it. Yeah, well, yeah, but once that's the same as not having seen it, really, isn't it? Yeah, a bit. Um, we watched the Twelve Gifts of Christmas last night. Yeah. Yeah. Was it good? That dog shit. Oh. Uh, is, it, is that like a Hallmark movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that sounds good. Um, it was the is it was very funny. It's a portrayal of what boomers think like Gen Z or millennial people are. Because it's just like this woman who's like an artist. She she makes pictures right at the beginning of the film. She just walks into a gallery and goes like, oh, hey, can I like, I'm here to maybe get like a gallery showing of my art. And then the woman in the gallery is actually really nice about it. And she's like, oh, do you have an agent or something? Do you, you know, have you done similar things in the area? And then she's like, no, no, um, just... 
trying to make it and then the the woman in the gallery like she says like oh well this is for like established artists not someone on their way up like she didn't even say for like you know urchins like you she was like you know for for people on their way up you know they go somewhere else she spends the whole rest of the film slagging off this gallery woman like they didn't even look at my paintings (laughs) it's like yeah because you're just a mad bent from the street and came in and demanded like you to have a gallery showing in manhattan (laughs) <laughs> Madness. Also, amazing film for obviously filmed at the height of summer. Oh, they like no. all of the trees. It was filmed in Salt Lake City in Utah. All of the trees are full of leaves. <laughs> so what they did was they just grayed out the background of loads of the shots. So it's just these grey trees <laughs> blowing in the wind. Oh, no. I love that, when the snows, like, roll out snow and everybody's, like, wearing loads of layers, but they're all open so no one gets heat stroke. <laughs> yeah, it is amazing. Um, um, yeah, yeah, so then she's an artist. She decides to sack that in. Uh, and then she... Well, she does it. She fails after asking one gallery for a thing once (laughs) so then she just becomes a personal shopper (laughs) alright because she's good at buying Christmas gifts for people oh that's a that's actually something you could make a living out of yeah yeah (laughs) so what she does is she just like she goes to a bakery a lot her only advertising she does for her new business as a personal shopper is to (laughs) just put some business cards on the counter in this bakery she then spends the next 75% of the film saying, yeah, but I'm going to make a website. <laughs> it's just super funny. <laughs> and she makes a website and they briefly show it on screen. And it says on there that she has a big good connection with a bakery. <laughs> and that she's friends with Eva from Eva's Bakery. <laughs> and it's the only thing on there. <laughs> So she lands one client, right? <laughs> Who's this hunky businessman that doesn't Uh-oh. want doesn't answer his mum's calls even around Christmas time. What? Why doesn't he I think he got his heart broken around Christmas. <laughs> No, no, he's just a fucking dweeb, to be honest. Uh, his character motivations there, the whole thing, were just baffling because he he's like one of these guys, he can't leave the office, he's always there. She's always like, oh, what are you doing on Saturday? And then he's like, you know me, babe, I'm going to be in the office. Um, so she lands this one client who's this guy. She <laughs> didn't. Instant, he just wants her to buy 12 gifts for people he knows at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> she instantly goes and rents a flat. What? Off the back of the commission of buying this world gift? <laughs> she, yeah, she's like, okay, I've got a successful business. I've got one client. Can't see this coming to an end. He's always going to need gifts bought for him. All goes year and, round. She goes and starts viewing flats and stuff. She then loses him as a client. <laughs> And then that is her motivation for her picking up the phone and being like, yeah, I will get the flat. Oh, it was a riot. Really recommend it. <laughs> there, please watch this film because there is one performance in it that I found so baffling. I really thought <laughs> that person had wandered onto set by accident. <laughs> Oh, it was amazing. All um, right. We'll all watch it by next week's episode, The Twelve Gifts of Christmas. <sighs> Right, okay, the doorknob thing, okay? Yes, yes. (laughs) Right, basically, the question is, would putting a thingy on one side of the door manage to give that much heat on the other side of the door? Yeah. I think it would, because there is, like, a metal stick that goes through all my door handles. Yeah, 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 they're definitely connected. But first we need to know a few things. The volume of the door handle. No, um, maybe... Voltage! 230 well, volts. What is that thing? Oh, yeah, that little... Yeah. Yeah, why would you have that? Yeah, I don't right? know. Right? I, when I was doing this, I was just like, you know, like, because you, you you see that scene, you, you, you see pictures of him hanging it on the door. Yeah. Um, and you're just like, yeah, that's the McAllister's hot stick. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I googled it, and according to BuzzFeed, what that thing is is an electric coal uh, charcoal starter. What now? An, ele- an electric charcoal what, for starter. like starting a charcoal fire. Yeah, so you just take that, you let it heat up, and you just whack it in the fire, and then it just sets fire to the charcoal. Crikey! So that's going to be quite hot then. Yeah, so I googled it, and now <clears throat> this is this is modern tech. This is 2022 electric charcoal starters. They are 550 watts. And they are, uh, they can apparently get to 600 degrees Celsius. Shitting Nora. That's yeah. six boilings. That's six boilings, exactly. <laughs> now, I don't know about 80s technology. I don't know how far <laughs> electric charcoal starters have come along in the last 40 years. Well, you'd think it's quite a simple piece of tech. So I'd have thought, not wildly, it's basically a soldering iron, isn't it? But bigger. Yeah, I've gone off these stats, you know, I haven't fucked around with it. Now, I googled what are old doorknobs made out of. (laughs) Something that doesn't tarnish by how shiny it is. Now, the answers I got were brass, bronze and iron. I'd go with brass for the McAllister's one, it looks brassy It looks brassy, doesn't it? However, before Joe Pasquale puts his hand on it, the brass doorknob is glowing red, correct? Yeah, yeah. Now, brass glows red at about 700 degrees. So the coal heater couldn't have got it that hot? No, because the coal heater itself only goes to 600. And there's going to be energy losses from one side to the other. So it's not brass? Well, it could be iron. Iron goes hot at 460 degrees. Okay. Now, I didn't know what formulas to do about (laughs) doorknobs and doors, metal electric heater um but i think we're gonna debunk this one i don't i think that the temp like i don't think that if you put that thing on one side that much heat energy would get transferred to the other side okay because he was branded wasn't he He had a little m in his in his hand yeah and this is of course if they are even using iron doorknobs as discussed, the McAllisters are fancy bitches. They're probably, you know, brass doorknobs. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought an iron doorknob. Unless unless what the McAllisters made their fortune, because that's quite a big house that they've got there in some Chicago prime real estate. Maybe Mr McAllister's job was that he was at the forefront of coal starter fire technology and they had one that was three times as powerful as everyone else's. Maybe um, that could be the case, but I still think we're going to debunk this one, to be honest. All Um, right. Yeah, fair enough. So we could have frozen the outside fairly easily, probably. Maybe. um, But we can't burn Joe Pasquale's hand off unless we have iron doorknobs. Unless we have iron, like, because the thing is that the the electric charcoal starter is getting to 600 degrees, but he's just hanging that over. He's not insulating it, like channeling no. that heat into the doorknob. As we know, heat rises. So that's going to just be, so it's going to heat up the room a lot. And don't get me wrong, the knob's going to be hot. That's going to be a hot knob. Yeah. But hot knob. 460 degrees on the other side. And then we've also got to factor in that if that, this thing's, you know, Almost 500 degrees hot and that wooden door hasn't caught fire. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, You've frozen. Your video is frozen. Oh, that's a shame because I'm pulling some really cool shapes. All right, you're back. So, yeah, we're debunking that one. Uh -uh. Myth busted. Oh, you love myth busters. All right. Laura, what's your favourite Christmas food? Um, roast potatoes. No. Yes, chocolate. Mold wine. I'd accept mold wine. All the other ones are things you have all year round. Yeah, but when you're... Well, what else isn't? Pigs in blankets, turkey, vegetarian. stuffing. Vegetarian. <laughs> yeah, but you still like these things, or like you used to. Yeah, but it, I would feel too sad saying they were my favourite now. Because then it's just like, oh, yeah, life is meaningless when you care. Yeah, being vegetarian does ruin this conversation. I love a chocolate orange, but as regular listeners know, I've been eating those for the last two months already. Yeah. Um, I like stuffing. 
I like stuffing too. I think pigs in blankets would have been my favourite pre-vegetarian. Red cabbage? I do love red cabbage, Ron. You've got me there. You've done me a, a pre-Christmas Grinch. Oh, Un-grinch. yes. You've been grunched. <laughs> um, right. The next thing that you asked me to investigate, Laura, um, was the tarantula that is dropped on Simon and um, Simon Garfunkel's head when he's breaking in. Yes. So, the tarantula in Home Alone is a Chilean rose tarantula, otherwise known as a Chilean fire tarantula, otherwise known as a Chilean redhead tarantula. Oh, lots it's, of names. It's the most common type of tarantula in the USA. Because it makes a good pet? Because it makes a good pet. Now, what are good pets not, Laura? Venomous, Ron. Hugely dangerous, exactly. Uh, I will highlight this. I was reading the Wikipedia page for this type of tarantula. <clears throat> Quote, This tarantula has a diverse diet, including grasshoppers, crickets, moths, beetles, cockroaches, mealworms, small lizards and mammals. Not that diverse, I think. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I would have expected. Yeah, that's a lot of very similar things that this tarantula yeah. is eating. Yeah. The females can live up to 20 years old. Oh, yeah, we don't know whether Buzz's one was a male or a female. Yeah, it could be up to 20 years old, but because they haven't actually like been in the market that long, we don't actually know how long they live ah. because like we haven't had them for that long, is what Wikipedia said. Do you know I mean, parrots live to like 80 years? Yeah, parrots are like as smart as like children. Yeah, that's wild. 80 years. Yeah. But how are they at defending a house? Tarantulas. Oh, <laughs> I thought we meant parrots. Um, tarantulas. Well, here's my guess, Ron, is that the tarantula just wants to head for heat. Okay, so you're thinking it's going to climb on the knob? No, but like, you know when it lands on um, Daniel Stern's chest and then he screams? No, is it Joe Pesci's chest? Ah, like that. I think the tarantula would like... Daniel rum- Craig. No, Daniel Stern, the other one that's not Joe Pesci. Oh, Garfunkel, yes. Tom, when he hadn't had a haircut in a while. He looks like, um, I think the tarantula would run for a warm bit, like the neck of his jumper or his armpit. Okay. Um, So they do have... I don't think it would like loud noises very much. Okay. What did you ask me? Did you want I me to I asked about say like things? how they'd be good at defence, not about their likes and dislikes. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. I don't think it would have any sense of defence. I don't think it would know it was defending anything. No, me neither. It's, it's, that's fine, that's fine. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> kind of um, what, I was, uh, what I was getting at um, is... <laughs> sorry, my phone's trying to... Extreme battery saver is on. Oh. Well, I'll turn it off. Um, um, yeah, so venom-wise, they do have venom. It is right. administered through the fangs. Um, are you paying attention, Laura? Yeah. Or are you on your phone? I'm not on my phone, no. What are you looking at? Um, some colourful labels. Okay. But I am listening. No, that's okay. Venom is distributed through the fangs. Yeah. But this one isn't venomous, as we've already established. No, it is venomous. What? We said thought it wasn't. No, you said I not said venomous. it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember now. I said not hugely dangerous. So the it's bits venomous. That I say aren't the facts. <laughs> yeah. But it's not really dangerous to humans. The venom wouldn't be okay. an issue. I think it would probably hurt a lot, but they'd be fine. However, the um the the Chilean rose tarantula's biggest defence is it has urtica- urticating hairs located oh. on its abdomen. What, what it does mean? is it rubs rub- them out like a pineapple. No, no. what are they called porcupine? Worse than that, it sloughs them off by scratching its abdomen with its uh, legs. <clears throat> These hairs are then an irritant, and they when they get in contact with the predator's skin or eyes. Oh no! Yeah, oh, so, so it just shaves its butt all over you. <laughs> basically, it's kind of yeah. like defensive dandruff. It's almost yeah. how it sounds. <laughs> Um, so, oh man, I bet that tarantula feels really bad about itself at tarantula reunions. <laughs> Just all the other guys have got really cool defensive mechanisms. He's, hey, well, yeah, I, if anybody got a Gillette, hmm, I'll show you. Oh, you wait if this gets in your eye. <laughs> 
Yeah, but at the reunion of the Chilean rose tarantulas, the bare-butted tarantula would be the the cock of the walk. Yeah, because it like, just got into a fight outside. Yeah, smooth. <laughs> um, so I deem this defence, although maybe not something that would have stopped the wet burglars completely getting wet into the bandits. House. It definitely would have hindered them as they came into contact with other defences. So I deem it unbunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I think, like, the average person wouldn't know. They are not learned doctors like us. Yeah. They wouldn't know that they're just dealing with a little bit of itching powder off a spider's butt. So I'd be quite perturbed to see that crawling towards my mouth. Yeah, I always freaked me out that when the spider lands on him, he screams like that. I would be closing orifices, not opening new ones. Mm. Agreed. That scream haunts me to this day. <laughs> now, Laura, what's your favourite Christmas present? That I've ever had? No, just what's your favourite type of Christmas present? Um, Board game. Yeah, board games are good. Yeah. What's yours, Ron? I like that when you get those selection packs that are like in a tray, but oh, it's like yeah. a, 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 a crunchy that you can give to mum um, and like a flake and a dairy milk and stuff. And a curly whirly. Yeah, curly whirly. Curly whirly yeah. used to be the size of a small ladder. Yeah, yeah. not anymore. That's weirdly one of my favourite quotes from the thick of it. Um, right, the last bit. Now, this isn't going to take very long. Because I didn't do lots of research for it. Paint cans. Yeah. Because he did that really well, little Kevin McAllister, to know how long the string to hit them both. Yeah. Um, so, I was trying to work this out. I was trying to work out how much force a paint can would apply to a face. I was trying to work out how much energy that paint can would have as it was swinging down on that pendulum. And then, obviously, I needed to know how much force or energy it would take to obliterate a human skull. Yeah. Encased in a meat bag. I could not find this information anywhere. No, but you are on several lists. Yeah. Now you've the spent an evening I Googling go- it. The things I Googled this afternoon um, <laughs> was quite horrific. Some Belgian police are sitting around like, uh, if there is anybody who wakes up with a face staved in, it was this little sciencey boy. Mm. The weird thing is, though, right, that um, I, was, I was Googling this, I was getting nowhere. I text a friend of the podcast, Noah, I'm like, Hey, man, if you wanted to know how much force it would take to kill a person through blunt force impact to the head, how would you find that out? He texted me back and was like, maybe look at, like, bike helmet studies and they might have the information there. He's it's, so smart, friend he's a of the smart podcast, boy. Noah. Um, so I did that. So the Belgian police are going to be like, oh, he was trying to work out how to kill someone, but then, like, <laughs> planning for if they were wearing a helmet. <laughs> But anyway, um, so I really struggled with this one. So um, basically, uh, what I'm going to do is read you an answer on Reddit. (laughs) (laughs) Someone else that did this. So shout out Chandler a year ago for answering the question. The question request was by Philly Mac 33. In Home Alone, when Kevin swings the paint cans off the railing, how fast are they going? How much force and damage would they create to a human face? So then Chandler says, two story stairs, approximately 8.53. Oh, I love their writing style. I love it. Really setting the scene. Detective Noir style. He ascended perhaps six to eight steps. Is a she had a figure short... that had been poured into the room like fog off a duck's back. Yeah, I she I all the way up to here. Um, you filthy animals. Is relatively short, man. Let's say his head is then two point nine meters up from the ground floor. So a pendulum of five point six five meters, putting it in. Putting it into a pendulum calculator for one gravity is an oscillation of 4.77 seconds. Putting that through an angle calculator for a 90 degree perfect pendulum, assuming the first drop is roughly equivalent to a perfect pendulum, gives that a max speed at the bottom of 7.45 meters per second. Yep. (laughs) 
I don't remember, but memory serves that they were smaller cans. Half gallon? So let's say 2.6 kg. So that would be a momentum of 19.37 kilogram metres per second. I like to imagine that Chandler is a married man with three children and they are all being bathed and put to bed and his wife <laughs> is saying, are you, are you coming to help? And he is writing the thesis of his life on Reddit. <laughs> like, no, darling, my time has come. I'm helping the people. Let's have a look at his timeline. Um, um, yeah, you might have nailed it there. Yeah, I'm very good at reading people. Yeah, anywho, um, so then he goes <laughs> on to say, um, a 100 mile per hour fastball has about 6.66 kilogram meters per second of momentum. So we're a full three times that. 100 mile per hour fastballs to the face have caused pretty horrendous industries, so triple that amount is brutal. Broken nose and orbital caved in, fractured skull and shattered jaw, just like the Grinch. The whole nine <laughs> yards, depending on the way it made contact. And that's what Chandler says. So that would have been the end of it in actual fact there. Just doof, down they go. Yeah, I think so. All right. Ron, this has been the greatest end of term film I've ever watched. Yeah, no, it was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, thank you for doing all that work, Ron. Did you have a nice time? Once I stopped doing the fucking water (laughs) freezing, (laughs) yes. Well, it's our first Christmas as a podcast and um, we would like to say thank you to everyone who's been listening. Considering we've only really been running for half the year, we've built something pretty lovely, haven't we, Ron? We have. Yeah. Do you want to say anything, Ron? Um... God, you get so awkward once there's no science anymore. Yeah, because it's not scripted anymore. I haven't written this bit out. No, just say something from the heart. Yes, nice to be around. <laughs> no, in your voice, you dork. <laughs> it's nice to be... Well, she, it's nice to be around. <laughs> See what I have to put up with? Anyway, listen, I love you, and Ron does too. He just can't say it because he's so weird and awkward. Um, we are doing another Christmas episode next week because it felt very odd to get straight back into the curriculum on the 26th of September. Yeah. So next week, Ron, what are we doing? You can't do normal stuff when you're in the year, Gooch. No. So uh-uh. what we're going to do is we are going to do a triple science flying reindeer special. I'm very excited about this. We're going to get some... We've actually bought two reindeer and we're going to teach them to fly live on Lex Education. <laughs> No, we haven't done that, but we're going to find out about reindeer flight. Um, That will be out next week. But listen, have yourselves a very Merry Christmas. Please keep safe and happy and warm. Reach out if you need someone to talk to. I know this year can be very difficult for people. So, hey, we will be on the social medias uh, tweeting and doing science nonsense. And um, if you are with family or friends or loved ones or alone, we hope you have the absolute best time. And we will see you next week. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, everyone. Christmas dismissed. <laughs> Class Christmased. What do you think of that one? <laughs> <laughs> Class dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>